been studying, you're feeling confident, you're ready to take your first GED subject test. Let's talk about whether or not you'll be able to take your GED subject test online at home. Online GED testing is a relatively new offering. It's at least one positive outcome out of all of the upheaval of the last few years. Online GED testing might be a good option for you if you live far away from a testing center, if you have limited transportation, or if you don't have scheduling flexibility with your work or home responsibilities. Whether or not you're gonna be able to sign up to take the GED test online at home is going to depend on five factors. First, you need to be located in a state that allows for online GED testing. This status might change in the future, so definitely check the official list on the GED com website. I'll link that below for you so you can check it out. As of right now in June 2022, there are more states that allow for online GED testing than states that don't. Some states don't offer the GED test at all, and I hope that if you live in one of those states, you know that before you start trying to get your GED. Those are Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Maine, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, Tennessee, and West Virginia. If you live there, you're gonna have to look into some other high school equivalency options. But of the states that do offer the GED test, only New York and South Carolina are not offering it online at this point. So in summary, if you live anywhere outside of the states that I've just listed, you may be able to sign up to take the GED tests online. In some states, the tests are even free or discounted from the regular price if you take them online. But again, check the list to see what it'll be in your state. Speaking of different states with different rules, you need to check to see if you qualify to take the GED in your state at all. I get a lot of questions on this channel about whether 16 or 17 year olds are old enough to take the GED test. And this varies a lot from state to state. Here in Pennsylvania, where I am, you have to be 18 or older to test, unless you go through a very special permissions process. In other states, 16 or 17 year olds can take the GED tests. So again, please check the rules for where you live because it does vary from state to state. Number two, to take the online GED test, you need to score in the green zone of the GED Ready Practice Test for the subject you'd like to try. The GED Ready Practice Test is the official half-length practice test from the GED testing service. This test looks just like the regular GED test and it's a great way to get a feel for what kind of questions are gonna be on the test. The GED Ready Practice Test is also the best way to see if you are likely to pass the regular GED test. If you're scoring in the green zone on the practice test, you're not guaranteed to pass, but you are in good shape, especially if you're scoring kind of further into that green zone. This test will also give you a report with some skills that you need to work on, especially if you're not in the green yet or if you're just right into it. Once you have that green GED ready score, you'll need to sign up to take the GED test in that subject within 60 days. One more quick note here about scores, if you do sign up to take the GED test online and you don't pass the test the first time, you can sign up to take it again, but if you fail it a second time, you will have 60 days that you'll need to wait before you can register to take it again online. I would make sure that you are feeling really ready and working with that score report to make sure you're practicing those missing skills before you sign up to take the actual GED test. Number three, you'll need to have government issued identification with you when you check in for your online test. This is how the proctor ensures that you are who you say you are so that the person whose name is on the test is the person who's taking the test. This might be a driver's license or a state identification card. This wouldn't include something like a work ID or a school ID. If you don't have a government issued ID, typically you can get one at your state's Department of Motor Vehicles or Registry of Motor Vehicles or whatever it's called in your state with your birth certificate, your social security card, and a fee. If you're under 18, you may need a parent to accompany you. Please make sure that you have your government ID all settled before you take your GED Ready practice test so that you can get that all set up in case you run into any problems. You can just search for photo identification in your state for information about how to get a government issued ID. Number four, 
you have to have access to the minimal requirements for technology to take the test online. There are three parts of this. First, you need to have a computer that can run the software that you're going to need to use to take the test. Second, you need internet connection that's strong enough and fast enough to keep you online during the entire test. There's a system test that will test both your computer and your internet connection that you can access on the GED.com website. You need to try this before you start thinking about signing up for online testing to make sure that your computer will do the job. You'll need to download and run the OnView software, so make sure whatever machine you're using, you do have permission to do that. The third technology component that you'll need is a webcam. The GED is a proctored exam, whether you take it at home or at a testing center. This means that someone from the GED testing service will be monitoring you the entire time that you take the test. If you take it at home, you will have to consent to being monitored through your webcam. At this time, it does need to be a computer with a webcam, not a phone or a tablet. If you know you don't have strong enough internet at your house, you may need to consider some other options. The GED testing service does report that poor internet connection is one of the major challenges that people have taking the test online at home. And fifth and final, there are physical requirements for your testing environment. You need to have a private workspace that has four walls, a door, and they say no distractions. No one else is permitted to be in the room with you or come into the room with you while you are testing. You are not permitted to have anything on your workspace with you while you test. This includes any other electronic devices like phones or headphones or watches, as well as calculators and scratch paper. You're not allowed to eat, drink, chew gum, or smoke while you're testing. Once you begin the test, you will not be allowed to adjust or move your webcam for any reason, and you'll need to stay seated at your workspace throughout the entire test. You aren't allowed to speak or cover your mouth during the test. And I have heard some reports that if you are moving your mouth while you read at all, or if you look away from your computer screen, you will be contacted with a warning from your proctor. And if this is something that keeps happening, your test might be canceled. If this sounds really strict, it definitely is. The GED exams are secure tests, and since they are allowing you to take them outside of a secure testing center, they are doing everything that they can to make sure not only that you're not cheating during the test, but also that you're not taking anything with you after the test that you could share with someone else. Since you won't be allowed a physical calculator or any scratch paper, there is an on-screen calculator for you to use and there is a digital whiteboard that you can um, both type into and use uh, your cursor to take any notes or try any scratch math that you need. If you think you can follow these guidelines and you are still interested in taking the test from home, consider whether or not you have a room that has a door and you'll be able to be alone in throughout your entire test. If not, you might look into a community space like a library. Sometimes libraries do have private rooms that you can reserve ahead of time that would meet the criteria. You could speak with the librarian at your local library to see if they could accommodate you. Since you will need to be alone, other places that people typically would go for Wi-Fi like coffee shops are not an option. If you are able to test in your home, there are online proctors available 24 hours a day. So you may be able to schedule your test during odd hours like after or before work. This could be really convenient if you're somebody who can't take time off during the day to test. Please let me know in the comments if you've taken the GED test online or if you're thinking about taking them online. What influenced or is influencing your decision to do them at home instead of at a testing center. If you have taken the test either online or at a testing center, what did you think of the experience? Would you recommend it to a fellow tester or would you do it differently next time? If this video was helpful to you, please press the like button so that YouTube knows that this is a good resource for fellow GED studiers. On this channel, I make videos about how to study more effectively so that you can achieve your goals. So please subscribe if you'd like to learn more. If you're not quite ready to test yet, you can check out all my study resources for all four GED subject tests. Thank you as always for watching and until next time, happy studying.